Let's write today's notes. Um, title this notes and it's going to be called Proving the Quadratic Formula. This is a California standard. You are expected to know how to prove this. Hundreds of, I mean, probably thousands of years ago, someone came up with the proof of the quadratic formula. And we benefit from it by just using it to solve for x. So to remind you, this is the quadratic formula. That's our goal. We are going to prove that x is equal to this big, big monstrous equation. And the equation we start with is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. This is a generic quadratic equation um, where a is unknown, b is unknown, and c is unknown. Okay. And normally, the first thing we do when we try to solve for x, we make y equals 0, or yes. So instead of putting it with y, 0 equals this equation, I'm going to make this equation equal to 0. I like 0 to be on the right-hand side. Okay, so it's going to be like this. ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Okay, so it doesn't really matter whether the equal zero is on the left or the right. Now, the technique that we're going to use to solve for this is called completing the square, which you already know how to do. And when we do complete the square, we prefer to have the a term be just a 1 rather than some number. So to get rid of that a, I'm going to divide by a. Because a divided by a will give me 1. So that means I have to divide everything by a. What I'll get is 1x squared, which is the same as x squared, zero divided by a is zero. So I'm just going to put a little comment to write here. The first step is divide by a. That's the first step. Okay. So now that our x term has a 1 in front, we're happy. Now in completing the square, the first step is we want to remove the c term. Well, this is your a term, 1. Your b term is actually b over a. Oops, I forgot my little x here. And my c term is actually c over a. So this is my c term. That's why I want to move to the other side. Okay, so the second step is move C to other side. To do that, I'm going to subtract C over A to both sides. And that will give me X squared plus B over A X equals negative C over A. Much better. So now to do completing the square, I need a new c term because that c term didn't work for me. So I'm getting a new c term by dividing the b term by 2. So what this means is take the divide b by 2. While the b term is actually b over a, and if you're going to divide by 2, isn't that the same thing as b over a, a times one half? We change a division problem becoming multiplication by doing the reciprocal. So this will be b times one, which is b, two times a, which is two a. Okay, divide by two, then square it. So that means I'm going to take this b over 2a and square it. And that becomes b squared over 2 parentheses a squared. I'm not done. That means the 2 is being squared and the a is being squared as well. Now 2 squared would be 4. a squared would be a squared. There, that's the number that I'm going to add 
to both sides. I'm adding b squared over 4a squared. So now this becomes x squared All right, now I know I've completed the square. I should be able to get a square now, and I can factor this if I do x method. This is what I do for x method. So now step four, x method. I'm going to change color so you can see better. My a, my first term here is a 1. The middle term here is b over a. And the last term here is b squared over 4a squared. So think of what times what will equal 1. That's easy, 1 times 1. What times what will give you b squared and 4a squared? What if I put b, half of 4 would be 2a, times b over 2a. Check it out. Does b over 2a times b over 2a give you b squared over 4a squared? Does it? Yes, it does. Okay, that's good. Now crisscross multiply and see if it works. Crisscross this way, you get 1 times b over 2a is b over 2a. Crisscross this way, 1 times that is b over 2a. Add the 2 together and I get 2b over 2a. 2 and 2 canceled it gives me b over a. Yay! It does match the middle number. So this is the factor. And this is the one that gets the x. 1x is the same as just x plus b over 2a. x plus b over 2a. And over here we still have b squared over 4a squared minus c over a. Okay? Now I'm getting closer to getting this to look like this the quadratic formula. This is the goal. x to equal all of this. I'm getting closer. It's okay, so let's continue. This is actually the same as x plus b over 2a power 2. Okay, and I've got this mess for fraction to deal with. Now in order to subtract two fractions I must have the same denominator, which I don't yet. Well, in common, um, I have two a's here, I have one here. That means I want to make this, give this an, another a, and this has a four and this doesn't, so I want to give this denominator a four as well. So what if I multiply this denominator by four a, do it to the top as well? That will give me four a squared down here. So I'm just going to rewrite the stuff on the left. C times 4A will give me 4AC. Okay. A times 4A is 4A squared. Well, now that they're the same, I can write them all over the same denominator under one fraction rather than keeping them separate. This will become b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared. This is starting to look familiar, huh? This is a discriminant. The discriminant is that part of the quadratic formula. It's getting closer. Okay, in the denominator I have 4a squared, not 2a, but I'm getting there. OK, 
Okay, now that I have a perfect square, I can square root everything. So I'm going to put step 5, square root. So when I square root it, I will get this. And remember, when we square root a number, which is a step on the right-hand side, all these are numbers, no x variable anywhere, it's going to be plus or minus. So the square and the power 2 end up canceling each other out, and you have just this equals plus or minus. Now, when I have a fraction inside of a square root, I'm allowed to do this. I'm allowed to put the square root to just the numerator and then put the square root to the denominator. Like that. It's getting closer. Now, if you look at the stuff on the right hand side, there is nothing here that I can simplify, but there is something here that I can do. The next step is I'm going to simplify the denominator. The square root of 4a squared is the same thing as the square root of 4 times the square root of a squared. The square root of 4 is just 2. The square root of a squared is just a. Okay, because the root and the power 2 cancel each other. So my denominator is actually just over 2a. So it's going to be plus or minus. The square root on top is the same. There's nothing I can do about that. It's all over 2a. Getting closer, huh? Look at the quadratic formula. Getting closer. Now I'm almost got x. I just need to get x by itself. I want this to go away. So I'm going to subtract it to both sides. Minus b over 2a. When you do that, this will cancel out to 0. You've got x equals negative b over 2a plus or minus the square root over 2a. I'll bring this up here. We're practically done. We have two fractions, but since the two fractions have the same denominator, we can combine them into a single fraction over the same denominator. x is equal to negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Ta-da! You have just proved the quadratic formula. So I just want to review the steps. The first step is make sure y is equal to 0 and put it on the right hand side. Divide everything by a. Move the c number to the other side. And take the b term, divide it by 2 and square it. After that, you x method. After that, you, are, you have um, number raised to the square power, change the denominator to be the same so that you can add those two fractions. Then you do square root everything. You simplify the denominator and you just isolate x and you're done. See you tomorrow.